Hi, yeah, it's Xavier. Welcome to my Bonsai Retreat. And do you know what? 5th of September, and we're having a, another mini September heat wave. I think it's uh, 24 degrees right now. But uh, we're going to be dealing with Picea, or more particular, Picea abies, which contains a big branch of about 40 different spruce varieties, all sorts of like that. Sort of northern hemisphere type tree. Um, coniferous evergreen. Carnivorous, like a Venus flytrap. That's them. I've got three very different varieties, three very different uh, types here that have just been sitting, doing nothing. Apart from this one, which many of you must remember is Tony's stovepipe rock type, root on rock type creation, which I really need to get to grips with. So if you want to see what I'm going to do with all three of these different uh, Picea, then best hang around. Whatever happens, that is definitely going to be interesting if not vaguely dangerous. But I suppose before we get into the relative ease of the other two which are in standard pots, I really do have to do something about getting it out of this metal stove pipe. It's definitely metal because it's rusting there. I'm hoping that on the advice someone gave last year, I might just be able to push it up from the bottom. Thinking of getting some tins of beans and just slowly pushing it. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be faced with uh, getting a um, power saw or electric gr uh, or a grinder and actually trying to grind it away. But uh, yeah, it's been in this for you know well over a year. Uh, back two years going on when Tony did it. I'm sure if you go to Tony's playlist, you will find when he did this uh, experiment. I have no idea, there's rocks all the way down there. But let's go back to May when I was first having a look at this and actually, well back in May there was quite a lot more foliage. So let's go and have a look at that, shall we? Well, we're in the last week of May and uh, this uh, spruce that uh, I picked up from uh, Tony, uh, God rest his soul, his uh, it's been very, very quiet basically for most of the year, but I have recognised I probably need to do. Watch out for any wire bite. And I sort of, it's sort of borderline at the moment. But also, you've got lots of uh, new uh, buds coming out, and what I can do right now is reduce anything that's got three or four down to two. This one here, we've got one, two, three from the same point. Put it trying to side on the front, moving away towards or here. That's going to become a back branch. Probably, if this is going to be the front, we'll remove. Hmm. There's nothing much more coming up along here, so it doesn't really matter. We'll remove this one. Move a few of the needles because what will have to happen is I'm going to have to reapply wire. So we move further out along here. I've got, you can see there, one, two, three. I could move the middle one, but that'll almost make them 180 degrees apart. So that's no good. I've also got one underneath it. I've got one coming towards me here. So I'm going to take the one that's coming towards on this side and leave two there. One underneath, I don't want either and just do some needle plucking around sites here and when you needle pluck just be very very careful and aware that you could actually get buds in there and you don't want to rip them off so let's just clean that up. I'm going to continue to clean that branch up and these ones and then we'll come back and have a look at the top. Now as I go around cleaning it out you notice these branches have taken all the uh, needles off and uh, I mean there's not a lot of growth there so I'm happy I want these to continue to grow out but what I can do Certainly here, got a new growth there. Well, look, there's a bug under there, get rid of the bug. This growth here, I might end up, well there you go. The birds think this is the right decision, so what I am actually gonna do is do something a bit more radical. I'm actually gonna cut that, that off there. So we've got this and this. As we get higher up, I'm quite happy to keep this length on here for now. I want energy to go in, but looking up here, um, I reduced one that was growing from here. And we can, if we want, 
just shorten off. There's actually little buds in here you can see as you go along, very similar to what you might do with larch, where the next junction is going to come out. So you can actually shorten a lot further down if you really want to. But in my case, I want more energy. I want to continue. I just want to, what I want to avoid is three. So here's a classic one just here. We've got one, two from the same point, plus one opposite it. Bearing in mind my front, my front is somewhere around here. So that's all right. I wire that, wire that, and that. Easy to see. I've got two coming from the same point. One of them's already got um, ramification on it. One of them hasn't, so I'll get rid of the one that hasn't. Then pluck just the needles closer in so that I can just lay a little bit of wire on it in a minute if I want to. But it also helps me just to see the branch at the junction. What I'll do is cut the one that's coming towards us and I'm just going to shorten growing tip on this. Yeah. I am aware the basic line I'm looking is up there. We've got this one that's going to go up there. We've got something behind. I really need to take take this down a little bit. Let's make the big cut. So that's where I want the new growth going up that way. So we'll see. I'm going to put this in somewhere shady and, uh, and just see and observe. Hopefully it'll be all right because I want to get it out of this pot later on in the year. Anyway, now should we zap on and uh, see whether we're having a funeral or whether we're having a celebration. Funeral. And so we come back now to early September and though we've got less foliage and yeah, we've definitely had death occurring here. Looks like there might be a bud there. We have got lots of buds on the end and strong green growth. So overall on all different aspects of this, there are healthy buds coming and shoot. So I'm, I'm really optimistic. Yeah, that's definitely a shoot there, which means I can already make the decision there and remove that, which was never going to be any good at all. And what I will also say before we uh, pull this out, again, like junipers, like cedars, they really do benefit from having a um, late summer, early autumn repot. And I think it's all about giving the tree maximum time through the autumn period to put on all that root growth so that when it gets into the spring all the energy is going into um, production of um, foliage rather than getting it interrupted and stuff. I, I have known of doing spring repots and they can uh, salt for a bit. I'm just really giving it blah because I'm putting off the difficult bit which is getting out of there. Uh, I need to uh, cut the wires first. So let's get those wires removed. I mean, this thing is well and truly fixed in that pot, that's for sure. I'm gonna have a little bit of a, uh, a waggle around first before I surprise you all with the, uh, the unveiling, so to speak. So this could go very well, or very badly. Okay, well, the, uh, the time has come, and uh, just just by way of attention, there is hopefully going to be rocks and roots all entwined in there, but just in case they haven't entwined, um, I am ready. I'm going to have a deeper plastic pot, but I've also got some cling film ready to do some emergency wrapping in case it needs it. I really have no idea how it's going to look, and yes, the temptation is to leave it there longer, but I'm not convinced the soil and the composition of it is good enough give the, um, the growth that I want. I was expecting more growth from this and that normally indicates a root issue. So here's how we're going to do it. Simple piece of wood. I was going to use a tin of beans but hey let's see what happens and we will just carefully push it up and I can feel it moving. There it goes. Now this is the risk of course isn't it? Oops, what happens here? Very dry there. Got lots of um, perlite by the luck of it. But are we gonna have lots of roots in there? That's what we want. 
Well, the nice thing here is that that's holding together. See some roots here. Just don't want to break that up. Okay, I think we're gone. I think we're going. That was quite exciting. May not have seen it from your point of view, but uh, I might even have some uh, decent music playing in the background for that. But anyway, it's getting close. I can show you some quite a lot of roots around there. The main thing is, it didn't do what I was fearing, which was going to just fall away. Now, hopefully, you can see we've got lots of roots coming down around the outside. Down the base here, there's a lot of roots. We've got them all coming down here. I can't see the rock, and I'm not inclined to take it away yet. Okay, I've uh, changed my mind. I'm going for this pot here. It's a little bit narrower. Just want to see at the base where that rock is. So ideally what I want is the roots that are the base there to also start spreading out. Just find out where the base of that rock is. So all I can do is just very gently start probing. Okay, I've taken away probably about, I don't know, two inches off the bottom. It's loose-ish. So I just uh, took away that much root. I'm not too keen to dig too much more in there. There's lots of healthy roots, but I've cut away all the base of those roots. So that means that's going to encourage new root growth from those, which will spread out on the pot. I want the whole base of this to just fill with roots, loads of growth, so that the existing roots that are growing through this uh, through this um, perlite mix will, um, will hopefully um, continue to hold together the root over the rocks. Um, I really should go back and have a look at the video actually to see how we set it up. But I think if I tried to pull any more of that away, um, there'd be disaster. I am going to take away some of the top, but first of all, let's fill around the sides up. And to be fair, I think the minimum thing I really want out of this, I just had a feeling that these roots need just a bit of better better substrate or whatever to uh, to get themselves into and put some mega growth on this in 2025 so truthfully we probably won't see the extent of the rock for a good few years it's um it's okay but I think it needs a lot more um a lot more thickening so let me continue to do that and then we will just take some off the top and see if we can find at least the top of the rock okay so I've given it it's got a nice support around there and I apologise if this is just a wee bit anticlimactic. <laughs> That's an understatement. I know there's a few there who have been waiting to see if the rocks or anything's taken place. And to be fair, by the time it's been on there, you'd expect there to be some sort of gripping. But I just, I haven't even seen the rock yet. <laughs> this is where I find out that it was the ultimate joke and there's actually no rock on there. All right, well, it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any rocks today. Well, I don't want to say this is turning into one of the big anticlimactic events of uh, 2024 at Bonsai Retreat, but it certainly feels that way. If I tried to pull away any more of that, um, that soil that he'd used, it was already feeling quite um, flexible. So I took off what I felt comfortable removing. I mean, I put that all the way down. I can't feel a rock in there. I, I, I will say I'm a, a wee bit disappointed, I expected something more to happen, but what is this going to achieve? First of all, actually I've got to get some, oh my gosh, that wire's digging in. Not a good idea to uh, wire scar a spruce. I'm going to have to get the wire off. Well, it's out of uh, it's out of this, and that definitely needed to happen. like how the idea started off, but I didn't feel that there was enough growth happening within the tree itself to give those roots room or or space or whatever to to develop and thicken and to uh, eventually grab however the rocks are set up i've got a funny feeling one of them is three or four rocks all uh, all entwined together um, this could be one of these interesting tony experiments that if you stick with my channel you will see the the true results in about three years time i'd imagine i can't wait that long it's a very nasty scarring there um, yeah, not sure how that'll heal over. I've got a funny feeling with spruce. It's a quite a slow grower. We might have that for a while. So anyway, way ahead for this. 
it's just got to grow it has just got to grow and sometimes I think as a youtuber actually our desire to show something remarkable um, can sometimes push us into decisions that are a bit silly and that's why I didn't try and find you some rocks so what we will do is we're going to go have another quick look at the other two uh, Picea all they need to be done is put into some decent soil and uh, perhaps just a little bit of pruning well, unusually for me, this uh, this next one is pretty well a nice formal upright, and uh, I do need to do one thing straight away. I know I do. Just remove that that bit up there. Okay, there's there's some little branching there, but it's not so thick and over with branches. I'm going to reduce where we've got some branches coming from the same point. That's all I'm going to do is go around and just make sure that we don't have wasted branches that are conflicting with each other so I'll just thin this one out just a little bit we don't want stuff too close in going upwards so anything going upwards I'm going to remove and I will apologize to some of you now because um, I've gone probably just over halfway up the tree um, and just cleaned out anything that was in close in here. I've still got to do up this part here, but it's very hard to describe what it is because it's a, it's a very personal choice whether you're picking where you think potential branches could come from. The main thing is just cleaning it out, trying to get a sense of horizontal where you want it. We've got two branches coming from the same point here, but also another one beside it. So I do need to decide which one to remove and my view is to take away the upward one um, this is we've got three from the same point actually uh, so it's about looking where there, there isn't one on the tree below it so that's useful there's nothing below that line this one well we've got stuff below it so probably I'll take that one off and this one I'll take that one off okay to remove one of these that's got a nice what I like about this one here it's got a nice horizontal flare on it whereas this hasn't this is going up a lot higher but there's not necessarily anything below it but for now I might just leave that as potentially ginnable okay well there it is rough as it is a um, little bit unbalanced I've taken off probably 50% of the growth and uh, you know if these back bed like they're supposed to then I'll get lots of new stuff to work with but for now that gives me a, a line and something to to look at potentially so really all we need to do now is get out of there lots of roots on there all I'm going to do is just open it out have a look and see where the real root base is on this. It's been in that pot for a long time, so you get lots of these heavy ones twisting around. I can't see. It's always a pain. Which again, there's always a good reason to try and get these things out of the pots earlier rather than later, so those circle roots don't get too solid and hard. Okay, so just putting one of these um, cheap um, Chinese pots. They're always cracking and breaking. It's probably about 50% maybe 60% of the roots. I took away quite a few that were crossing or going around um, There definitely needs to be a lot more work done on the roots, but certainly not today and uh, I'm definitely not picking the front that's for sure. So at the moment It's just trying to get it into a new pot where we can bed it in And see how it grows don't want that root actually What we do want to do is make sure we spread the roots that are in there nicely. I'll just put a rubber tube cover just to try and reduce any scarring that may take place. Now, if I'd had a, um, a deeper plastic training pot, I most certainly would have used that instead of this. This is a little bit shallow, but to be fair by this stage of the year I've pretty well all the useful stuff has already been used so sometimes you just have to adapt and see what happens and spread the roots that we have got nicely around the pot but 
got this one that's going right across. That definitely won't be part of anything, I don't suppose, but now, okay. Usual rules, just make sure cover all the air pockets that we can. Probably about a 40% reduction in roots, 50% reduction in foliage, and as far as I'm concerned, I won't touch it for the whole year now. I'll let it go right through. Wait and see, maybe around June, July next year, and see what sort of um, response we're getting from this. But if it's going by anything uh, spruce wise that I saw this year, it'll be slow and a bit sulky. So, uh, we'll have a quick look at the other one. Again, it's got lovely, lovely growth. I've done a little bit of branch stuff at some point, some point uh, during the, uh, the time I've had it, just enough to see what's going in there. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take it out of this great big pot. I'm going to take away probably about 50% of the roots, put it into a, hopefully I'm going to try and find a training pot somewhere that I can use. I will again probably reduce and clear out some of the branch structure so you can see what's there. And, uh, and then I'll show you what it's like. Now, if you've liked what I've been doing with Picea, bear in mind this is probably my first real dabble into it. Big thumbs up for trying at least. If you've got any good advice or comments you feel I need to take uh, heed of, because as I say, I am new with this species, um, please whack it down in the comments. I certainly won't feel offended if you told me that I did everything wrong. But apart from that, let's, uh, let's give a quick snap on the count of three and see how much I mangle it. Three, two, one. Okay, well, there you go. I've um, thinned it out quite considerably. And as I say, it's sometimes it is very difficult. If I've got my great big mitts in front of it, you're really not gonna see what or why I'm doing it. So I think we've done enough pruning videos and thinning videos to say that, you know, it is about what you want, but it is just about getting circulation, light in there, so that what remains can uh, hopefully thrive and, and be healthy. So I'm looking at a front around there for now. That could change quite quickly. And uh, I've left, again, about 50% of the foliage on. There was potential for a, a front in there as well. So, two options. But really, let's get it out of that. And it's gonna go into another deep blue, one of those cheap China ceramics. So, same process as before. I'll uh, show you it in a minute. So, what do you think? Just a straightforward uh, mica round pot. The reason for that is it allows me this front, which I'm starting to like, or indeed, the original one I was looking at, which was there. Either way, I think there's something that I do need to do. It relates to up here, I think, to be fair. And uh, it's very rounded there, but I might need to remove something, I think. I'm going for that front right now. So if we go for that, we've got a problem with something crossing here. So let's remove that then. Like that. Don't need to resolve that quite quite yet but there's obviously um, heaviness up there I do think this is coming as a back we've got a lot more branches coming to the back so I'm gonna leave that for now and I'm gonna stick with my front there what do you think of that then if you prefer the other front obviously you know what I'm gonna say whack down in the comments and uh, it just means I need to do some adjustment there ultimately in the end it's basically been a 50 50 with the roots took at least half the roots away from there and uh, can tell it was uh, repotted a good many years ago because uh, it was back in the day when I was using my great big rocks river rocks to uh, fill the bottom of a pot which uh, is the last thing we really need to be doing for trying to create nice root structure for bonsai anyway there's one last thing I was going to say before I uh, let you get on your way well for those of you who haven't already done so I was thinking I was thinking more and more about um, the option that I took with that, uh, that stove pipe. And it did occur to me. You're wondering, I know, I can see you wondering what occurred to me, because not a lot occurs sometimes. Yeah, what occurred to me was that um, perhaps I should have been just a little bit more patient. And hey, maybe I was driven by my, uh, my YouTube craziness. So uh, thankfully, Although I can't do anything about 
putting the genie back in the bottle, so to speak. What I can do is take advantage of the fact that Alex Braunton is going to uh, let me have the second one that's in a um, in a stove pipe, and uh, he said I can do what I like with it. Well, do you know what? I thought what I'd do with it is instead of taking it out, just put the base into a into a pot. Maybe that by putting uh, the opportunity for the lower roots here. To I don't know why I'm holding an empty tin. It's not like you can see anything. <laughs> No, but by allowing the roots that were growing through the bottom to actually establish a new soil in a new um, uh, a new pot, um, it may well then feed all the roots that are inside uh, and, hey, enable me to get that root on rock which we want so that when we actually do pull the tin off, those roots will be a lot thicker. And I think probably that is the uh, the patient and better option. So that's what I'm going to be doing with the uh, the second of the... Uh, of the uh, stovepipe experiments. Anyway, I'm pretty well done for Piscia. So from Xavier, happy bonsai and God bless. Cheers.